a month-long standoff between the executive and legislative branches of the newly independent Russian government came to a head in early October 1993, as President Boris Yeltsin continued his fight for more powers at the expense of the mighty Supreme Soviet. Back in March, Yeltsin had announced on national television that he was taking on extraordinary powers to govern the country. The Supreme Soviet, the powerful permanent body that called together meetings of parliament and was headed by Ruslan Khaspulatov, convened an extraordinary Congress of People's Deputies. Votes were held to strip both Yeltsin and Khaspulatov of their powers, but neither passed. Passions quieted down, but flared again on September 21st after Yeltsin signed Decree No. 1400, calling to change the constitution and disband parliament. The decree ordered the dissolution of both of the thousand-plus member Congress and of the Supreme Soviet, and aimed to strip the People's Deputies of their authority. Two days later, another extraordinary Congress of People's Deputies opened at the Supreme Soviet building, known as the White House. The Congress called the President's actions an attempted coup. A special session of the Constitutional Court, chaired by Valery Zorkin, effectively agreed ruling that the decree gave grounds to remove Yeltsin from office and confer presidential powers onto Vice President Alexander Rutskoy. In response, police and troops were sent to surround the building. Phone lines, electricity, and water supplies were cut. People and vehicles, including ambulances, were not allowed access. Supporters of Parliament managed to form armed militias. They had been among tens of thousands who marched to the White House on October 3rd and broke through the blockade, despite negotiations between the two sides and the signing of a protocol to defuse the confrontation. Rutskoy also called on supporters to storm Moscow City Hall and the Astankina TV Tower. Police used firearms to defend City Hall. But the worst bloodshed was at Astankina, which crowds attacked around 7 p.m. Yeltsin introduced a state of emergency in Moscow and dismissed Rutskoy. Troops rolled into the capital. By 7.30 a.m. on October 4th, an operation to clean out the White House began. At 10 o'clock, tanks opened fire on the building. Casualties began to be carried out. And by 6 in the evening, those inside had surrendered. Rutskoy, Khaspulatov, and the other leaders were arrested. According to official data, about 200 people died and at least 1,000 were injured. All those involved in the standoff were amnestied the following year. It's certainly possible that Russia narrowly avoided a civil war.